everybody, welcome back to Wicked Good Sports, and welcome back to the Villa. The Villa, Villa, their second episode, hosted by Aaron Slater and Rhett Conaway on this episode. Aaron, Rhett, how are you guys doing? Good. Delightful. Yes, so, I mean, you gotta, you gotta put a positive face on, because last week we were talking, hey, 4 nothing win, that's good, we're, we're happy, got completely reversed this, this week, uh... Four nothing lost. Aaron, what happened out there? It was a tough day. Uh, a really tough day in the office. Mm. It's really hard to play in a stadium that has fifty two thousand Newcastle Magpie fans yelling, mm. screaming at you. It's also sure. really tough when there's three injury times with uh, five minute stoppages in between. Mm. Um, it came out unchanged. Formation and squad, uh, they still ran out there with everybody. Um, so we thought we had a lot of hope. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was doused. Well, not relatively quick. Um, when Emmy Martinez went down with the concussion, it was kind of getting a little, like, a little hairy. Mm-hmm. Um, we did have good counterplay in the beginning. Um, there was... Probably three or four opportunities that they could have scored. Uh, didn't just the quality wasn't there. Mm-hmm. A lot of what was going on is they just couldn't get that final that final critical pass, the yeah. big chance. Um, they, when Dia had a nice cross in, uh, a couple shots where he he just couldn't latch on to. Same with thing with um, Cash had a nice cross into Ali. Who couldn't volley well apparently he needs to take that to the training ground mm-hmm. with unai this week uh it just a lot of it was daily too many dribbles the guy needs to cut down on the dribbles mm-hmm. i get that he's very tactful with his feet he's got good dribbling skills but man needs to cut down four dribbles and pass or you're done uh it seemed like a lot of the players like Ollie were caught between two minds where mm-hmm. they wanted to cross but wanted to dribble. It's just the flow wasn't there. There was right. no flow. Um, Newcastle's counter press and their pre- high pressing really didn't allow for that tempo to mm. be there for Villa. I um, mean, you could definitely see it right from the get go. I even thought, like, at the end of the half, it's like, there's no way they're keeping up with this. Mm. There's just, they were just pressing so high, counter pressing, and just relentless. And that's scary. And mm. That was scary to watch because there was just nothing. Um, uh, PK was a problem. That one really kind of killed us right at half. Mm. Uh, Ashley Young. Was, I know he sent heaps of praise to him last week, but mm-hmm. he was sent to the cleaners. He some Aaron Trippier and Miguel Amarone put in their dollar fifty, put him in the washer, and sent him on a spin cycle. It was brutal to watch. I was screaming at halftime, please sub this man off. It can't get much worse. Didn't bother subbing him off. Mm-hmm. In fact, they subbed out Maddie Cash and put in Luca Dean, who's coming back from injury, which is fine. But it, just a lot of tactical mistakes were made, especially you know, new coach. A lot of his first away game. What are you gonna do? Um, right. He probably just knew that it was as much as he wanted to win. It's kind of like throw yeah right yeah yeah so you gotta i mean not too much time to turn around from when he was hired to when they actually played so you can't necessarily implement too much different just gotta get through it and uh hope it's not super bad but uh, rat like same thing uh you watched the game what what, you, what were your thoughts i don't i don't i'm not gonna get the nit- nitty-gritty like mm-hmm. aaron did um but from a large overview from the bird's eye view of this game I think that this was a game 
from a team who had a not very good manager that they mm-hmm. just got rid of, mm-hmm. who now have an interim manager who knows he's on the way out, mm-hmm. facing a incredibly well managed team. I think it, it really we we can talk about all the in betweens. I've had disagreements with Aaron about both the second and the third goal. I think both of them, the lion's share of the blame, needs to be on Tyrone Mings. The second one, I don't know where he ran to. He, I don't, he got a, a, vo- a cross coming into the box and he runs towards the ball and it just goes sailing over his head. I don't know what the heck he was doing. And mm-hmm. then the third one, he's got to make it, he's got to win the rebound. And if nothing else, he has to make it more difficult. He, and he just got caught flat footed. Um, the fourth goal was Miguel Amaran wonder strike. He's been doing that. He's like, right now he might be the best player on the planet. Mm-hmm. He has been playing so well. But the big problem was they went into Newcastle, which is a historically hard place to play. They don't have a manager and they went up against one of the better managed teams. And mm. is it, you're coming off that four nil win and you you want to, you want to be positive about your club, but realistically there's Villa didn't really have a shot, you know? And I, I think that, if you take the two Tyrone Mings issues out of the way and you lose the game 2-0, do you feel better about it? Mm-hmm. Because I think I would. I think the scoreline is a little unflattering. I think that Villa had some better chances. I think that, especially towards the end of the game, Newcastle could have put a couple more in. But at that point, it was 4-0, and you, you know the win had been taken out of the sails, and there was nothing. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I'm excited for Villa with Unai. I know Aaron's about to talk about him. Yeah. Uh, I obviously know him pretty well. Um, I think that Unai is going to be a great manager for them, and I think that he's going to do what they need him to do. Uh, mm-hmm. But I this game, in a vacuum, it looks bad, but over the course of the season, this is going to be a whatever. I really mm-hmm. think so. Yeah, I mean, is there anything positive to take away from this one, Aaron? Anything that you saw out there that you're like, well, maybe going forward we can – make you know something good right i think in the first half they had uh but still good countering there was Mm. the quality to get going but it was just shut down so i emmy buendia was still working his channels was still coming back to receive the ball to keep progression going i think that's still there um Leon Bailey is still somebody who's a threat on the outside to burn mm. players. Um, Ali seems a little confused on the wing right now. It's It was kind of his natural position uh, between striker and winger, but um, maybe more time out wide he could find, you know, get the feel of it better. Mm. Um, and Donka was still breaking up passes and trying to break down play uh, from Newcastle. It just seemed like every time he, you know, was trying to break up play, there was another Newcastle there to scoop it up Mm. and keep moving forward. So I think a lot of that was, you know, maybe, maybe they were still stuck on high from the four, nothing win at at home. Um, There, I don't know. It's really tough. Um, Robert Olsen didn't look too bad in goal, which is fine. It's to be expected mm-hmm. for a backup goalkeeper. Um, but other than that, a lot of a lot of what hinges is you know Unai. Thankfully, we finally he finally came in, got his work permit yesterday, was able to get his hands on the team. Um, if you check out the Villa page, they have um, his first training session with them. They seemed uh a little confused not gonna lie um mostly (laughs) probably because of his accent as Mm -hmm. uh rep could attest to that his accent is very thick in spaniard um but i do not miss having to listen to that (laughs) but uh the players seem to hopefully be taking i i thought they were taking uh you know some of his instruction well Mm. uh but Unai, thankfully, I think 
I think the four nothing win definitely solidified last week. Anyway, mm-hmm. who knows? Transfer into. Uh, I think if we were still looking for a manager after this game, it would have been a lot tougher. Right. A lot tougher. I mean. But. So. Yeah, Unai, you know, he, he's here. Doesn't have a soft landing spot in his first uh, match. Uh, Manchester United, the number five team currently in the Premier League, is the first uh, game. How are you feeling about that? I wish I could say that I feel good because mm-hmm. Unai's here. But it is Man U, and mm-hmm. they are playing pretty well. They've won three of their last five. Um, they historically have been really good against Villa. Mm-hmm. Um, Villa drew last year's game in January and actually won, so they did pretty decent last season against them. But this Villa team isn't that Villa team last year, and uh, you know we're just in different ruts. Um, mm-hmm. I'm hoping for a draw, if I gotta be honest. I'm hoping for a draw. It's gonna be home, thankfully. Mm-hmm. So that everybody who has played against Villa at Villa Park always say Villa have a really strong fan base and it is a really tough place to play. Mm-hmm. So hopefully the fans come out and really make that, you know, their fortress and make it difficult for them because we're going to need all the help we can get. Um, mm. Hopefully there's, you know, some sort of green light or, you know, yeah, not the just light at to, all at the end of the yeah. tunnel. Yeah. Yeah. Something regardless something of the color, we'll, we'll take whatever uh, to <laughs> illuminate the way. Uh, Rhett kind of feel the same way on this, on this first game. Yeah. Uh, right. Right now is not when you want to face man United. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at their last five. They beat West Ham. Uh, they beat Tottenham. They drew Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. They are playing very good. Eric Ten Hag has managed to rein in the massive ego that is Cristiano Ronaldo, it appears. Mm-hmm. Um, Rashford seems to be in very good form. It is not when I want to play them. Um, that being said, it's the new it's the new manager bounce. You don't know how they're going to line up. This is one thing Eric Ten Hag is not happy right now because he has no idea how to line up against this Villa team because mm-hmm. no one knows what it's going to look like. Right. Um, if there's one thing going forward, this match, this upcoming match, I don't, I, I don't expect it to be good. I'm expecting, you know, three one, maybe two nil. Mm-hmm. I'm really not expecting it to be what you'd want it to be. But historically, right now. Man United should be beating Villa at that point, you know, in a year or two, who the heck knows, but right now that's where they should be. Um, however, going forward, I think the silver lining with Villa is a, with all the crap that's gone on the season, they're still not in the relegation zone, which is nice. They're damn close, but they're still not in it. And right. B we talk about teams and clubs being greater than the sum of their parts. Mm-hmm. Villa is the perfect example of the exact opposite of that. You have a very talented team that, due to a bunch of scenarios, just can't put it together. Mm-hmm. You watch them put it together with that 4 0 win, you know? And I, they just, they have a very good goalkeeper. Obviously, I'm going to love him. Mm-hmm. Um, but they just, they, they're a really good team that just needs to start playing better soccer. And I think when you look around the rest of what's going on, I think they're going to be fine. I think they're going to finish up 15th or 14th and start mm-hmm. to build on something. And next year, with a couple good transfers, I could very much see them top half of the table. Sunday? No, I don't. It's not going to be that quick, you know? Mm-hmm. No, definitely. Um, all right, Aaron, anything else you wanted to cover before we get on out of here? Um, let me see. I think around the league, you know, Arsenal still top of the league with 31 points. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got a tough matchup with Chelsea, but they've been floundering. Um, something with Graham Potter is not clicking. Um, and City's two points behind. They face Fulham at home, and that shouldn't be. They should dispatch Fulham. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Liverpool is sitting ninth, which is shocking um, as far as the quality that they have and the coach that they have. Mm-hmm. Um, Newcastle, fourth, super- shockingly. Uh, Eddie Howe has done an extremely good job with that team, and their owners have done an extremely good job at getting players to fit that system. Um, I saw when I was watching that game, uh, Bruno Guimaraes, their midfielder, was facilitating out to the wings to Joel Linton mm. and um, Al Marone. They were making crossfield passes that were precise. Mm. Um, a lot of their signings just seem to have gelled, and that's that's such a critical thing for a team to have. And I think that's the problem with Villa that they they're having right now mm. is there's just been so much turmoil between the Dean Smith era, between the Gerard era, and hopefully Unai is going to be able to rein in and bring some team cohesion into this and to be able to get a one set mind that we play for Villa, that we are not bigger than the club and mm. that we as a team, if we want to make top 10 and we want to go for Europe, you need to be, Team bound worthy, not individual mindsets. Mm-hmm. And I, I think when the owners and the transfer window opens up, they're going to give Unai the bank. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's been stated before. They're going to give, and I've said it before. They're going to give him the bank, and they're going to be like, "Sign who you want. We don't yeah. care as long as as long as you bring in quality players that fit your system." It, um, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't they have stadium upgrades going on? They were adding, I want to say, another, you know, I don't know the numerical value, but I want value. Yeah, but they, they had money say, tied up. Oh, the Hoyt, sorry, the Holt end as an additional seat. Um, adding additional seats, holy crap, uh, <laughs> to that section. No, we got uh, you. We and got then you. they've got training ground upgrades that they're doing. But again, uh, you got as money tied up. Said. You're coming off COVID. You know, now that you don't, everyone's back. Stadiums are full. Things are paid off. You got the money to spend. Oh, you know, our watch it happen also, with Arsenal. Mm-hmm. Our owners are also billionaires, too. I know it doesn't really get said that much, but both um, Wes Edens, um, it, uh, Wes Edens is uh, actually the owner for the Milwaukee Bucks. Mm. Um, and Nasefi Swear is an Egyptian entrepreneur. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't looked into his mm-hmm. profile background, but both are billionaire owners. So if they want to throw money around, they'll throw money around. I mean, obviously, with signing em- Emery, uh, it gave him one of the biggest contracts in the league, I want to say. It is mm-hmm. a massive amount of money that they signed him for. And they thankfully signed him for four and a half years. And for those nice. for those who don't know, Unai Emery has won the Europa League multiple times. Mm-hmm. He's coached, he's managed at PSG. You know, he is he's not just some coach on the up and up. He's won European silverware. He's mm-hmm. coached big teams. Hey, they they didn't just go get whoever. You know, mm-hmm. when you look at who they were looking at, they clearly wanted to win. Yes. Um, uh, they. A lot of uh, people at the Athletic, Greg Evans was pointing out that, you know, their last few managers have been player team, uh, excuse me, uh, coaches that haven't been there, haven't done that. Mm -hmm. I mean, Gerard kind of had some experience with the Rangers, but it's the Rangers. So Mm -hmm. really just being there is happy for them. Um, oh, and yeah, it's a it's very different those... league. It's a very different yeah. league up there. Yeah, it is. If you ever watch that, it's a pretty neat league to watch as far as the difference between the EPL and the Scottish Prem. But um, it's, yeah, it's not it's... as brutal as it can be down here. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Emery is a guy who's got obvious talent, and he takes the talent that he's given and he goes with it. That's mm-hmm. what I was saying to Rhett before was we're lucky to get Emery. Because any team that has he's got his hands on, and most some of them have been underachievers, he flips them and he mm. makes them overachievers. And he's he did it with Arsenal. I think that seventeen, 
seventeen, eighteen is when he was there, or eighteen, nineteen. I think it was both those seasons. Yeah, um, and we we made a Europa final, and I know everyone like, thinks we're the mighty Arsenal and we should have won it, but when you consider what our defense was at the time, you know. But that's what I'm saying though. Like he took. I don't think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that team was not really fifth of the table kind of team. To be fifth of the table was a very good spot to be in. And I yeah, think there no, was... he wasn't. He was not a bad coach, and he left at a time when we were restructuring. I don't yeah. think it necessarily had anything to do with him. I think it had to do with what he wanted out of a team and what we wanted out of a coach. In fact, when Arteta was hired, he was hired as a coach, not a manager, and he has since been promoted back to being a manager. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everyone is looks at his Arsenal days and say that they were a disappointment. And they were, but I, how much of that was Unai's fault and how much of that was where Arsenal was? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's impossible for us to really know, but I think for Villa, he's very good. I think he's a very good signing. I mean, you saw what he did at Villarreal, so... Yep, I'm I'm totally on board for him. I just I also have some reservations, obviously, because of the last few coaches that we've had have haven't been duds, but just been very underwhelming. So mm. you know, I got to keep my distance a little bit. You know, right? No, um, for sure. Well, we'll see. You know. Other than that, that yeah. injury news: um, Emmy Martinez has a con concussion. Um, he's got to go through the protocols first. He mm. was apparently fine after the match he had delayed onset during mm -hmm. that match um, a lot of questions have been raised as far as concussion protocols in the EPL and mm -hmm. what they need to do to make it better because there's just something isn't right about it it didn't sit right with people mm -hmm. um, let's see no real updates for Bubakar Kamara uh, on the Video that I watched, he was training individually. Um, Lud Ludwig Augustin, uh, I butchered that name. One of the Swiss loans that we have for left back was training with the team today. <laughs> and that was a step up for him because he's had a ankle injury, I want to say, mm. or hamstring, one of those two. I think it was hamstring. But it seems like we're starting to get some of the squad back of, apart from the longer in injury players that are currently out like Diego Carlos um, mm. who we hopefully can get sometime in the end of January god that'd be great uh, but other than that you know it's it's on it's it's on home to face Man U and hopefully we can pull a draw if we get anything more than that I will you'll be hearing me from here <laughs> right oh man all right so uh with that uh anything you want to promote give a shout out to anything like that Absolutely. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Way West Stand. Go check out that man's Arsenal page. It's really good. Um, he gives a lot of good, insightful uh, Arsenal tidbits and you know match day and post match uh, hype and all that sort. So go check that out. And then there's Albany Gooners who uh, he's been diligently been working on. Um, he's getting you know getting that up and going so if you want to go check him out at wolf spear garden um on albany and central no nope, broadway broadway. Broadway. That one, broadway so go check him out there go check out his pages he's he's a one-of-a-kind man yeah well, thank you man Greg, do you want to talk a little bit more about this uh, yeah, so Albany Gooners is a fan group I'm putting together. The goal is to be recognized by Arsenal America. And then I have the Way West Stand, just like Aaron has the Villa Villa. Um, so you'll find us on Wicked Good Sports. And then um, <clears throat> apart from that, the other thing to keep an eye out is we're going to have a lot, a lot, a lot of content about the World Cup coming up. Yes. We are 18 days away, guys, and it's going to be big. So. Just two matches. It's crazy. We're only two matches away, at least for domestically. Yeah, domestically. And, you might have a Carabao then, Cup in there. Yeah, uh, whatever. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, first game back. I don't know if you've checked that schedule. It is Boxing Day, baby. Yep. So first you day back. Catch day my after butt Christmas. Your garden. All right. Um, yeah. So you can obviously follow all of our social media in the description down below. 
Uh, this is Wicked Sports, guys. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And I'll see you Thank all you. in the next one.